Hello YouTube, welcome back to part two of our internet auction site engine strip to find out what's wrong with it. Um, a friend of mine came round yesterday, socially distanced of course, as, in, as he was passing, and he asked why I hadn't jet washed the engine off before stripping it. And the reason for that is, as soon as I found there was a problem with it locking up as it turned, I had pretty much decided in my mind that this thing was coming completely down. Nothing's made me change my mind so far. The dirt that's on is dry, it's not, it's not loose and wet, uh, and it will all be cleaned off then and completely reassembled clean. So that's why it's like this. So we might as well just get on with it. And today we're going to pull more bits off it, unsurprisingly, and we're going to start the fan. So I'm going to be using air tools again because it's the easiest way for me. But let me just recomposure it and we'll get started. Right, so we need a deep 14 mini socket, which I have to hand. And we're going to go in there. Excuse the noise for a second. One crusty bolt. Should be a washer in there. Which I cannot find. It wasn't one. Okay. And then there are two dogs on the engine. I don't know if you see them. One top, one bottom for the starting handle. I haven't got the right tool, but to use a suitable size object resting on one of the dogs. Give it a sharp tap. And nothing happens. Try that again. There we go. One fan. That'll get split and I'll pull that in a bath of citric acid to see what we've got when it's done. And then we have an empty points box, which is loose. Eleven millis holding that on. Points cam's not too bad. So we have a dust plate, and there's our auto advance unit sitting behind. There is a small wire circlip here which needs to come off, so I'm going to try and pick to get that off. that. No, I can't is the answer to that. Come on, little so -and -so. There we go. So you have a little wire clip. And then that should pull off, which it does. And you have your two weights. Oh, that one doesn't want to come off. There we go. Right. So that then lets us get to our oil cooler nuts, which are there. No, I won't actually. I was going to disconnect the top and get this out of the way, but if I do, that weakens the, uh, the hold we have on the oil cooler. No, but you won't be able to see otherwise. So, there is a long bolt through here which holds the top of the oil cooler through the cases. Uh, which is there. So, I need to undo that and try and get this out. And then we'll come back to the oil cooler. So just turn you off for one second, we'll undo that bolt. We're going to have to go and find the bits. Right, the, uh, the nut's been undone on the other side. But the bolt is uh, corroded in the cases a bit, so it needs a gentle wiggling out. As you can see, it's rusty there. Oh, 
and it's no, not too bad. Bit cruddy, obviously needs a clean up. So let's pull you back again. So will that move forward enough? No, it won't. I was hoping it might get a bit of movement on that. A bit more movement on that, I should say. Let's try getting the spacers out. Now everything's crudded up. Right, okay. That's going to have to wait. So I don't know if you can see down there, but the oil cooler goes in with large nuts into the, uh, the crankcase. And that's what we're going to try and undo next. So an exploratory scrape. Yeah. Not a lot of crud there, but I'm going to get to try and get some lubricant in. I don't know how much good it'll do, but we'll give it a go because these, if these are seized, and to be honest, what usually happens, I think, most of the time, is that that pipe seizes to the inside of that sleeve nut, and then as you turn the nut, it breaks the pipe. I'd rather not lose the oil cooler. I'll give it a quick go with an adjustable, which is not usually a good idea, believe me. But if this doesn't work, we're going to have to move on to something else, because I have got the correct spanner, but it's not here. Oh my word. Oh, well, something moved. Give it a bit more lubrication and wind it back in again. Slow and careful with this, I think. Yeah, it's turning the pipe. Right, a bit more lubricant. I'm going to undo the other side. And then hopefully with a both loosen slightly, I can get a bit of movement on them. So I'll just turn you off, bring you back when I've done that, because I'm going to do exactly the same on the other side. Right, I brought you in a bit closer, so you can see a bit more what I'm doing. There's our nut and our union. The other side's moving, which is good. Should have taken that oil line off, really. But anyway, we can do that next. So let's... Uh, Moving that out of pipe, give it another bit more. Right, I'm going to try and get the other side moving and then uh, come back to this. And there you go, precisely what I didn't want to happen has happened. Despite lots of lubricant and wiggling, the uh, oil cooler has snapped at its mount on both sides just through age. So, that can all come off now, and we need an oil cooler. Add that to our list of uh, expenditure. I don't think I've got a second hand one knocking about anywhere. I shall look, but I don't think so. Right, so, we might as well get these out now, I can use a socket on them. Disappointing, but not unexpected to be perfectly honest. Given the state of the rest of the engine. So, there we are, you can see that's seized in there. And there's a rubber bung seal on each side, which obviously needs to be replaced when you replace the oil cooler. See, it's actually on, there, on that one. Right, well, I'm not going to throw any of that away yet, because I know somebody who... Uh, likes these for his motorcycles. He actually cuts them down and attaches them with tube for motorcycles. So he can have that. 
Right, so while we're here, we might as well get the short pump up, which is there. Two 11 millis. This will be getting thrown straight in the bin because the Right, that's your petrol pump. That's the rod that dries it. And then there's a, a spacer, heat insulating spacer. Right, I'm also take off the oil line now, which feeds the heads. It's a 12 milli feed bolt. Now these pipes are often very, very rusty. This one seems not too bad at all. So it's just like the bolts on the head, but it's there. It is different, so don't get them confused. They look very similar. But if you look in your workshop manual, you will see the difference. A little washer. So there you go, that's not in bad nick for one of these. Right, well as we're going to completely strip this thing, and we don't want it looking too disgusting, I think we'll try and see if we can get our uh, engine mounting plates off. So the 17s. For some reason I had 18 in my head, but anyway. Just drop you a bit down. So you can actually see what I'm about. So next we'll remove the uh, engine mounting plates because I want everything off this engine now. Right, there we are. Can you still see all of that? Yes, you can. Here we go. So we have an oil pressure switch. Right, once again I've got a, the correct size spanner here. I've got plenty of 22, just not here. So this will be getting replaced anyway because if you're going to go to the trouble of reboot the engine, an oil pressure switch is quite cheap. So there we go, one oil pressure switch. Have our oil pressure relief valve. Right, strong arm. I'm going to walk around and do all of this at funny angles. Wow, tight, tight, tight. There we go. There we go, spring, and there should be a cup in there. We might have to get a magnet to get that out, I think. No, we don't. There we are. It's actually very clean. I have had these stick before, when the car's not had their oil change enough. But that's very clean. Good. A plus point for a change. Right, things are going to get messy now because we have to get the oil filter off. This engine is still full of oil because it came straight out of the car, allegedly. Right, I do have a special tool for removing Perflux oil filters. And I've got a variety of tools for using on other cars of various sizes. And again, none of them here. So we're going to have to go with the old fashioned and extremely messy. Way of doing it and do that. Apologies for the brutality, but uh, okay, our pistons need looking at and removing, of course. They're held in by wire clips in here, an excess groove there. So you need to get something behind the clip, lever it out. And then try and grab it with some uh, side cutting pliers or similar. The problem is these are quite strong and frankly I hate them. They're just a pathetic idea. But anyway, that's me. There are a lot better solutions on other vehicles. Not one of Citroen's best engineering designs.
but they're not alone. Lots of people use these. Now then, let me try and uh, get that moved around. So once you get underneath it, you'll get it like that. Can you see that? Hopefully you can. Oh. Actually, uh, just disappeared because I was trying to show you more than need be. What you should do is grab it when it's only slightly out and then not either peel it round or just yank it out. It has now shot itself across the garage, which is not uncommon. So, to get our gudgeon pin out, it now needs to come this way. Now, you really, really don't want to put any pressure on the conrods. You believe me. You can bend conrods quite easily on all makes of vehicles if you're at all heavy-handed with your gudgeon pins hitting them particularly. So, this, yeah, it's stuck there, so I thought so. So, the options are, warm the piston up and try and push it through the screwdriver while supporting it, which is what we're going to do next. Obviously you need to protect your hands against the heat, but we shall give that a go and see if that works. So, we need a screwdriver and a hot air gun. Right, let's give it a go. So we need to warm the piston up around the uh, dodging pin. Probably not, but we'll give it a go, shall we? So protecting your hands and holding the piston to make sure it doesn't move the conrod at all. We can try pushing it out. No, nope, not a budge, nothing. Right, okay. Weapon of choice number two. Get your old barrel. And use that to support your piston like so. So now any sideways movement you impart is being held by the piston, so it isn't being transferred to the, sorry, by the barrel, so it isn't being transferred to the conrod. So we need a small drift. And make sure our piston is properly, bit of a three-handed job this one. taps and that's how we're going to get that out. Now the other option is uh, a multi-purpose thing like this which is uh, just a piece of threaded bar and then you'll need a socket which will fit just inside the uh, just inside the gudgeon pin like so. And you need another socket big enough to go over the gudget pin and touch the piston. Yep, so you need a deep socket that will go over the piston and allow the conrod, the conrod, the gudgeon pin to come through. Again, it looks a bit Heath Robinson, but it works. Okay, let's give our piston a little warm to help it on its way. We're still well supported. The piston can't move anywhere, and to be honest, this is the safest method because you're not applying any sideways motion at all. Three hands again. Right, let's try that. Bush has to be in good condition. There's a mark on the uh, pin where it's been sitting in the piston, but really that's not that bad. And that's a good tight fit in there. Yeah, that won't cause any problem. Won't cause any problems. That's good. So there's nothing wrong with the eye. 
it's smooth, can't see any uh, scoring or anything like that, and the pin's a good tight fit going in. Right, excellent. So I'm now going to do exactly the same on the other side, which I won't show you. And then uh, we shall move on to something else. Right, so we leave the piston to sort of show you the uh, circlip. Just a bent piece of wire. They cannot be reused. Got to fit new ones every time. Now, you can get types with ears, just like uh, internal circlips specifically, for pistons. I can't remember if I've got any of those for this, but I shall look, because I'd rather fit them. So there we go. The uh, pistons are marked up. I'll clean them off and show you better. Marked up forward, AV in an arrow for forward, avant, 8.5 compression on these.